What will the future of the COVID-19 pandemic and other infectious threats look like? How will vaccine distribution, trust in science, and economic priorities impact the pandemic and our preparedness for future infectious threats? Will everyone benefit from technological and scientific progress and healthcare innovations while responding to a global climate crisis? Will we take the collective action needed as a global community? Will humanity work together as one? We have developed four plausible scenarios. They are all plausible, they are all possible, and they are not predictions. They are an invitation for strategic dialogue. So we're not trying to predict the future, but we're trying to map out plausible pathways and then discussing what these pathways might mean in terms of our collective response. So foresight is really about structured thinking about the future. Indeed, this infectious hazard foresight initiative is really about shifting from reactive to a proactive approach to address infectious threats. This is the kind of conversation that gets us there. Not just the hardcore science and policy discussion, but this more reflective, engaged discussion that allows us all to speak our minds, speak our truths, and find better ways forward together. COVID-19 has not just been a great equalizer, but a great illuminator on how we need to work together, not just um, in global or regional collaborations, but within our national structures as well. Epidemics begin and end in communities, and the insights that communities have around the management of disease are really relevant. And I think we have to broaden what we consider to be the science of epidemics to really include communities, because at the end of the day, in my view, epidemics and pandemics begin and end in communities. Our young people, the youth today, are the most technologically advanced and probably even the most educated generation of all time. Um, this generation is more connected as compared to other generations. We can use that to our advantage in catalyzing the response. Tackling global inequality, whether it's class, race, gender, we need to tackle those inequalities or we won't survive as a species. And what they found was that trust in scientists was the key driving force for individual attitudes to uh, measures like mask wearing, so non-pharmaceutical interventions, and to vaccination as well. Trust in scientists was more important and had a bigger effect on people's behaviour than trust in governments. To me, uh, science is only as good as the way you communicate it. So it means that we have to get a lot better and a lot smarter about how we communicate the science across different areas so that it is able to be consumed by people wherever they are. Distrust comes when people don't know what you're doing. Universal health coverage, universal social protection, all of those are methods to stop the pandemic spreading and also to improve uh, people's lives. So I think we need to convince politicians that their interest lies in putting people and planet first. With respect to supply chain, we need to keep those warm. We can't episodically partner and then as soon as a, a crisis recedes, let those partnerships fall apart. Continuing to invest in those new technologies and innovation that may be nascent today that can help us really uh, have a robust response to, to that next pandemic. I think the One Health paradigm really is the solution and that's the horizontal approach rather than the vertical approach. I would say that we need to do the paradigm shift from managing disasters to managing disaster risk. So, what will the next five years look like? Will we be able to build consensus as a global community? Can we take the collective action needed to mitigate the ongoing risks of COVID-19? Will we be prepared for future infectious threats? What world would you like to live in?